This week in comic books over at King Shark in DC, we learn a lot about a bunch of different characters other than King Shark. It's, it's, uh, it's a good idea. Over in the land of Marvel, Moon Knight comes out and man oh man is that an epic storytelling going on there. We're going to dive deep into that one. And in the land of independence over at Frontiersman, right? Finally, an eco-warrior I can actually get behind. Like, slightly jaded old guy that likes trees. Yeah, I'll, it's better than I thought. All that and a few other more comic books uh, right after this intro. Check it out. Hey, what's going on, you wonderful weirdos? And Pokan Joe, and as always, you're super cool for swinging by. Appreciate having you here. This is my subjective review of what I picked up on New Comic Book Day. And uh, so, not not a huge haul this week, surprisingly. Really, really kind of slacked it out this week. But we got more plans for this weekend. So, yeah, a lot of stuff coming. So, definitely hit that notification bell because that's going to be some epic stuff going on. But without further ado, let's jump right into this. Uh, Suicide Squad, King Shark jumps in. And basically, there it's it's the new comic book day comic, if you if you got that. But then there's like but another four pages added to it. So if you don't know, King Shark's been called back home to fight in this, uh, you know, apex predator battle, if you will, for dominance over the species, right? But the fact of the matter is, is we're getting a lot of Defacer stuff in it. If you don't know who Defacer is, she's basically a, a joke. Like, she she does, it's like a peanut butter jelly sandwich, the name's in the title, right? She, she tags things and, and does things with spray paint, and she's trying to, I don't know, deal with the fact that she's not taken seriously as a villain, because she's not really a villain. At the end of the day, she ran a support group right and then we get a little battle between king shark and orca right that kind of happened whatever they all go into magical woo woo land through a portal where all these apex predators have to battle it out to dom to see who dominates and is the apex predator for our planet because if it doesn't happen we don't know like they just kind of left that part out i don't know it's a pride thing. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of having some trouble really diving into this story and making sense of a lot of it. But a lot of people like King Shark now, you know, because he was in a movie. So, you know, if that's your thing, you definitely get that Suicide Squad King Shark in here. Mr. Num Num himself. So, yeah. Uh, diving into Batman. Uh, 113. This is interesting. I like this. Because we get a kind of a, a, a snapshot of what Scarecrow was like back when he was a younger man in college kind of figuring out what fear was and of course he looks like an ichabod crane type of character you know you can tell there's a lot of fear there a lot of nervousness anxiety so it kind of motivates his character a little bit i get that and of course uh peacemaker uh, one and peacemaker x they kind of you know meet up in here and it's like hey if you don't settle down i'm gonna have to end you slick and peacemaker one's like he's all doped up on you know, fear toxin. So, you know, he thinks he's got to fight everything. Interesting. Good stuff. This still stays the top story for Batman right now, and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, next, we got Shazam, number three of a four-part series, which really kind of limits this story. So if you read anything from Future State, you can vaguely remember the whole Shazam thing where Billy Batson was in hell, chained to the Rock of Eternity, and Shazam was, like, running the Justice League and all that stuff. Vaguely remember that. This is just all the setup for that. We run into Nino in here, and he's a villain from way back. And, uh, you know, Raven has to come in and save the day because they're battling him out. Uh, and then we go into the Rock of Eternity. And who do we run into? Shazam runs into, like, a super young version of Black Adam. Is it Black Adam? Is it some time woo-woo thing? Who knows at this point because they just kind of left us there. I don't really see us getting too much detail in the next issue since we kind of already know the ending. Which is aggravating, but it is what it is. Uh, jumping into Marvel, so yeah, my pick of the week, like straight up off the bat. I wish I didn't. I wish I would have gotten some of the variants that were out there of this. But Moon Knight number three, our first real 
appearance, I guess. It's not even a real appearance at this point because he's had two cameos so far. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. If you know, definitely let me know down in the comments down below. Because, like, we've seen this character several times now. But whatever. So, you know, he has a problem. He's calling Moon Knight here. Harvest Moon, if you will. He's calling Moon Knight here, you know, uh, weak, soft, you don't understand it. But then we also get a lesson in here. You know, just because you learn something doesn't mean that you're necessarily effective or particularly good at something without practice, right? Like, you can book learn something, right? I'm, I'm one of those people, I believe anybody can learn anything. Uh, however, to put it into practice, that takes a certain skill set and mentality, right? Right or wrong, that's something that I believe. And here, Moon Knight kind of proves this point that because you got downloaded with all this knowledge, you know, like he was in the Matrix, Moon Harvest got all this knowledge of how to fight, and he's criticizing Moon Knight and his fighting skills. However, Moon Knight may have not been downloaded with all of it, but he spent years physically fighting people and ending them bodies, right? So I thought that was really interesting. It was definitely a cool take on that concept. Um, and I thought it was very well done in here. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Definitely my pick of the week. Uh, Death of Doctor Strange. Obvious reason why I picked this. My wife collects Scotty Young covers. So I figured, ah, you buy a comic book, you read a comic book. So I read it and this was okay. Like, I don't want to beat this up. Doctor Strange is not really, you know, like top tier reading level for me because it all relies way too much on woo-woo most of the time. But in this one, we're kind of dealing with time a little bit. Doctor Strange dies, as the cover kind of hints to, but he doesn't really die. He's got like a younger part of his soul kind of stashed away. So if something happens to him, it just emerges, right? And it's in its Silver Age costume and everything. So that's kind of interesting. Um... But really all this is in here is how busy Doctor Strange stays all day long between surgeries and fighting enemies and mentoring at a school and yada, yada, yada. Now, there's nothing to say that that can't happen in real life. I know I'm extremely busy. I know a lot of other comic book collectors between jobs, nonprofits, things that interest you, YouTube. You know, I think it was a good uh, snapshot of how busy a person can really be in the various things that they have to get done throughout a day. So as far as, you know, kind of taking this out of its fictional form, putting it in real life, I can relate to that. But the most of it was, I, I, I keep getting the hint that it's going to be a story about something else in the next issue. So I'm not totally on board with this. Um, if I get the next issue, it will be because I have a really small stack or another Scotty Young cover because my wife is going to want it. Like, that's where I'm at on this. Uh, and that's all the Marvels I got. Yeah, just two Marvel books. Uh, I know. Just nothing else really caught my eye. Uh, but, however, moving into Independence, I thought this was interesting. Um, he who fights monsters. So this takes place during World War II. Um, we have a, a Jewish family that's hiding, obviously, from a um, Nazi-occupied area. Um and at first, this seems just more like an Anne Frank type story, right? This family's hiding. This one doctor's trying to do the right thing and help them, you know, keep them hidden, stuff like bring them food, stuff like that. Um, but then we find out that there's an old Jewish uh, mysticism, right? Uh, a famous uh, mystic story from um, from Hebrew lore is the Gollum. Right, the, the monster is made out of clay. And I think we're going to get introduced to that concept because it was definitely heavily mentioned in here. And that's what they're kind of pushing for to help save the people, right? Will this doctor come on board with? So we kind of have like the scientific mind versus the mysticism and where the truth really kind of lies. And I find that extremely interesting. So uh, if my comic book store has it, I'll definitely be picking issue two of this up. This is probably one of those slower burns right comic books where it's going to take a while to get to it when it happens it's going to happen quick but uh, i'm on board with this because i love lore from other cultures and regions and stuff like that and when it's being introduced into a, a you know, american comic book format um definitely adds a different flavor to it and i really enjoy that so this was good i enjoyed it uh, my favorite independent this week was Frontiersman. Uh, this is great. So Frontiersman is a, a comic book, or I'm sorry, a superhero. He's obviously a comic book, but he's a superhero who's aged. He's got some age on him, has some experience, and there's a young group of people that are trying to get him to sign on board with their whole saving of the trees thing. 
believe it's redwoods in this one, which was a classical trope uh, throughout the years. And uh, he's kind of hesitant. Like, he just doesn't want to be a face or just be a name behind a cause because he's done that before and it didn't work out in his favor. So, you know, that kind of internal strife in here, plus, you know, an older guy kind of memorizing, you know, what it was like back in the past. Well, apparently he does jump on board with this particular crusade, even though all of his friends are like, man, you know, you're getting a little too old for that. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. I like this. Uh, I think it's fun reading. I don't think it's particularly deep. But it's definitely an enjoyable read. Kind of the think of a you know old western where you kind of bring the old gunslinger out of retirement type of thing, right? That's what you the feel behind this is. It's really cool. And last but not least, Once in Future came out, and this is gonna get convoluted and it's gonna get complicated, especially if you're picking it up here. This is one of those comic books you really have to pick it up from the beginning to kind of understand everything that's going on in here. That's not to say that this isn't a good comic book. I enjoyed this issue. It's probably, uh, the thing about Once in Future is it's a lot of setup, quick amount of action, next setup, right? It's a lot of setup in here um, for the most part. So in this one we get um, Lancelot, water-based Lancelot, if you will. He's made of water, or he's the spirit of Lancelot. And then we got our evil King Arthur over here. And they're going to kind of battle it out a little bit. Because they're not friends at this point. Lancelot is also very um, finicky. Fin fi yeah, Gwen. Right? He's in love with Gwen. And Gwen is obviously a, a primary character. And here's really Duncan's mother. Duncan being the, uh, the hero of this. Or side hero, sidekick. Because Gran is really the hero. See what I mean? This is kind of a complicated comic book at this point to even review if you're not really up to speed on all that. So, not for the first time buyer, but if you've been following this or you want to start following this, this is uh, issue 20. Uh, we're on our second arc now. The world's turned into this Arthenian type nightmare and they're moving forward with it. Definitely, this is a trade back at best. Floppies a little hard to get a hold of and you, it's easy to forget the information that's being given to you so this is really a book versus a comic book so yeah uh for new batman day i picked up uh batman uh night watch uh this is cool for the younger reader if you have younger kids you know right there at that age of starting to read it has that type of uh, artwork in it that's very appealing to young kids um, it's definitely geared towards that. I would recommend it. It was pretty good. I liked uh, Batman the World. I thought this was ingenious. I like other cultures to take. The same way I like lures from other countries or other beliefs being kind of Americanized and kind of told in, in an American fashion. I like this concept of these other creators from other countries kind of doing the same thing with Batman. You know, um, that's what you get in here. Definitely good feel, and you constantly feel like you're reading about Batman in it. They don't change the scope of what Batman is in any way. That kind of stoicness of them. And, uh, well, I, I don't even know why I picked this up. Um, but <laughs> it was uh, zero point. You know, this is the Fortnite crossover. Uh, we've already been, I've already reviewed it. No sense of going over it again. So that's my haul. Super short. So what's going on this week that requires such a short amount of reading? Huey's going to be here in a day. Huey from Blaster Stashing. And uh, we've been kind of, you know, formalizing what we're going to do, where we're going to go, and what we can bring you to as well. So definitely hit that notification bell on Blaster Stash It or here. I'll put notes or uh, link ups or whatever to make sure you know what we're doing, which kind of channel we're going to be on. And uh, we'll probably do Blaster Stash It from right here which will be fun and we if we have time we have an evil layer project kind of set up just kind of an in-between kind of thing for you the fans out there so definitely you might want to check that out as well all right guys this was a short one super short but i'm gonna let you go thanks for your time and uh, i'll catch you all next time bye